Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're getting up to speed with the changes to Tarkov's graphics settings that you might want to use yourself and how each affects your game in patch 14. Last year I released a video looking at improving performance, especially on streets of Tarkov and primarily for those with low VRAM, which is the camp that I fall into with my 3070 which only has 8GB of the stuff. However, a few things have changed since then which we will address as we go, but to start with I will reiterate what I said last time, which is that troubleshooting performance in Tarkov is really hard because the game's performance can differ from raid to raid which makes it tricky to see exactly what the problems are, alongside inconsistent optimization between PCs with different hardware, so what works for one person doesn't doesn't seem to for another. That aside, RAM is usually the easiest place to start as well as being extremely important as many maps, but especially streets, will fill your memory entirely with 16 gigabytes, making 32 really required to run the game at least passably on every single map. Streets is not the only one that's a problem, Lighthouse is another map that can be hard to run as well from this perspective as it's always been pretty chunky when it comes to textures too, but interestingly in patch 0.14 you also now have to be careful of Shoreline as well. I was very surprised about this, but early in the wipe some of my settings reset and Tarkov's textures ended up on high, which I only realised after I started a shoreline raid and the game was freezing and skipping. I opened up the task manager to find that all of my 8GB of VRAM and also all of the 32GB of actual RAM in my PC as well was all completely used up and I had to close Chrome to fix it temporarily until the end of the raid. The next one is probably CPU. For most people, Tarkov is more CPU dependent than GPU dependent, although GPU does become more important as you increase the graphical quality in terms of settings and in particular increasing the resolution. But still, most players that have all right graphics cards tend to be more CPU bottlenecked and benefit from a CPU upgrade more than a GPU upgrade. Broadly speaking, Tarkov tends to like faster processors, even if it means fewer cores, but it absolutely loves the extra cache on the AMD X3D chips, which is why I have a 5800X3D and saw massive performance gains over my old 3700X. In terms of watching out for bottlenecks, make sure to check the actual utilisation per core when in game for any single thread under high load because the overall CPU usage doesn't tell you the whole picture. Even then you might not see any specifically get to 100% but also have your GPU running at 50 and be wondering where the bottleneck is. It's still probably CPU, just Tarkov not able to use all the resources it has available. So in terms of VRAM, let's hit this first one right away because it's different to last time and one of the main reasons I'm making this revised video. MIP streaming, which I suggested in my previous one, doesn't work anymore for some reason and causes textures to load in with the worst possible quality even lower than low, making the whole thing look like Doom 95. This doesn't always happen and it's only on certain textures, but it looks absolutely awful and you're better off just putting textures on low than using MIP streaming at all. I don't know why this is the case, but I've had to stop using it completely, which is a shame because it was really good when it worked in patch 13.0. It can also cause Tarkov to take an incredibly long time to get out of raids after the ending screens with the little circle spinning in the corner, so if that sounds like you, go and check to make sure that MIP streaming is turned off and that should fix that problem. Hopefully one day BSG will update this one because when it worked, it was really good. The next one is the actual texture quality. This is directly linked to the amount of VRAM and RAM that you will require, being an insane hog of resources on high with medium and low less so. With my system, I can get away with medium on most maps, but because I'm streaming at the same time on the same PC, I tend to use low if I'm raiding on streets and lighthouse. However, there is a different setting that you can use for streets now, which is the Streets of Tarkov lower resolution texture mode, which is really good because you can leave your textures on medium and play streets more easily if every map is fine other than that one, and the intention of this setting is to take whatever texture quality you have currently and downgrade kind of to the level below with some other optimizations as well. I actually wish there was a setting like this for Lighthouse 2, and while we're at it, the perfect situation would be if we could just set each map with different settings, but I doubt we'll ever get there. So now let's go through the rest of the settings each in turn. These parts don't really matter too much, this is just menu background, language, quick slots and stance and health condition whether they're shown or not in raid, with polychrome or monochrome in terms of the health, so whether it's green or whether it's just all one colour. None of these affect your actual performance, so we'll just leave them as to whatever you prefer, and if you want to know more about the hotkey and vaulting, then I've got a whole video for that over here. After this we have automatic RAM cleaner and only use physical cores. These two are full of contention and myth and I find that automatic RAM cleaner doesn't really do anything for me. It does produce stutter sometimes and some people have reported that if you turn it on and then turn it back off in game that you can get a RAM clear down and you can kind of pick your moment to do it. So when you press the button you do see a decrease in the amount of RAM but I'm just not really sure if it works that well and whether there's even any point. Same with only use physical cores. I've tried this many different times on many different patches. It never seems to do anything for me. Some people say they use this, some people use process lasso. In my personal opinion I would just advise going over to Clementine's channel, go and watch his videos on the physical cores or not. I'm not really a hardware specialist and he goes into much greater detail about some of these settings, about process lasso, so go and watch his video if you want to understand more about whether you should or shouldn't be doing this and exactly how to use those programs because it's really not my forte. 
Again, after this, we have some more preference stuff. And so we're going to skip over into graphics. Now we're going to have to jump into RAID in one second. But to start with, we have our screen resolution. Some settings do matter whether you're on 1440p or whether you're on 1080. I used to run in 1080 and certain settings like DLSS just never used to really do anything for me. But now at 1440p, they do. And you will see a step up in graphics utilization from 1080 to 1440p on your GPU itself, or at least you should. When I made this guide last time, I was having some issues with borderless taking up lots of extra GPU usage, but since then it seems to have been fixed and now I just use borderless instead of full screen. Full screen makes alt tabbing a little bit more awkward and there are other things you could do in Windows. Again, you can check or uncheck use full screen optimizations and stuff like that. But again, I'm going to go and defer to Clementine because his videos are much better and very, very detailed in terms of these particular features. So go and watch his. Now, as we jump into an offline raid, I want to point out the difference between online and offline. Yes, you can and should really benchmark this stuff online. But the problem with online is that you can't control the conditions within the particular raid itself. Scav spawning in, bosses, the number of PMCs, what those PMCs are actually doing. All of these things can change the performance that you see, which is why it fluctuates so much in raid. It makes it very, very difficult. Offline, on the other hand, is at least the same every time. You can put bots on, which is better. But the problem here is that you won't necessarily get the same performance in offline as you do online. A lot of the things that we talked about, such as PMCs and scavs and bosses and that kind of stuff, all of that takes up CPU. And in offline, typically you're not a CPU bottleneck, which usually means you can get much higher frames than you would be able to in online mode. If it was just a case of higher frames, though, this wouldn't necessarily be a problem. But the issue is, is that because the CPU is so much more relaxed, you can actually turn on and off settings, as we will see a little bit later with post effects, which matter in offline. But in online, they actually don't make any difference at all, because all they're doing is putting extra load on the GPU, which has spare capacity anyway, because your CPU bottlenecked within the actual game, whereas in offline mode, sometimes you're more GPU bottlenecked, which is a bit strange. So there are situations where you can see things that make a difference in offline mode where it actually doesn't make a difference online. And so you really shouldn't worry about it. I'm going to jump into an offline raid in a second, but I want to show you about texture quality first. So it does say if you move this, that it says texture quality settings will be applied after the game's restart. This is actually not true. It turns out not to matter whether you restart or not. And you can even see this in the preset system. So if I just leave it at medium for a moment and we go into presets and we look at any old gun, doesn't really matter. We'll pick an ADAR, for example. And we open this up. We can see that the textures are pretty low quality. You can see it's, this is quite pixely here. We go into settings, change this over to medium. We get the warning again. But when we save and we go back, these are now higher quality. So this is now the medium textures ADA. So this works pretty much every time. If you want to swap between it, don't necessarily worry about having to close your game every time and like reload because you can just literally switch stuff here. This also works for other things as well, like MIP streaming or whatever. If you turn MIP streaming on and off, you can just do that straight here without worrying about it too much. I actually have my Streets of Tarkov frame limited. So you'll see if I go like get FPS one. We're only running it at like 80 FPS or something on offline streets, which is not really that gross. But we're getting about 75 just normally. And when I scope in, we're down to about 56, something like that. But it is quite low. The FPS overall is quite low. This time we're going to be running low textures with the Streets of Tarkov low resolution mode ticked as well, just to kind of double it up. I don't expect it to do much, maybe some performance extra pieces, but I think the textures still stay at low. Running this texture quality, my FPS is quite a bit higher. We're going to go back to the same spot just to triple check and make sure there's nothing funny going on. So I think this was pretty much where we were before, something like that. We were looking over this direction. So now you can see that I get something more like 82, 85. It kind of depends. It's sort of flickering up and down a little bit. When I scope in, we're now getting 60, 59, 60. Yeah, so it, this is an improvement, definitely, compared to what I was using. If I just go on medium, it's definitely better. Like the difference between like low 50s versus 60 in a scope does make quite a bit of difference, honestly. It bothers people seeing the signs like this. For me, I'm just not really that fast. I'd rather streets just run a bit better than worrying about like all of this stuff. So let's go through the rest of the settings just to see exactly what the difference is going to be. So to start with, we've got shadows. I normally just stick shadows on low. You can't modify this while you're in raid, to be fair, but I just keep shadows on low to keep everything looking relatively easy. Now, LOD quality. This is an interesting one. No, I normally have this about three and a half, actually. I don't know why I've even got that up at four. I usually have this at three and a half. LOD quality changes when different assets come in and out of a high quality texture model or not. So if we turn this right down to two, you can see that there is, will be some trees relatively nearby that should be switching over between a high quality model and a low quality model at relatively short distances. So did you see there was that little shimmer? Like there. So there's, you actually change the model from one thing to another. This used to be more obvious before the snow and all of that stuff. But you can probably see the difference there. So here, we're like right on the threshold. So we're going from a low quality asset 
So higher quality asset as we get close. And this is what the LOD actually controls. You can, you can see this tree like distinctly changing. So this is normally for when you're just like walking about. Because this does render a different version of the game. So the settings are slightly different. Anyway, so that's LOD 2. If you put LOD all the way up to about 3.5, I find that I tend not to notice at this distance. That is a lot further away in terms of trees like fading in or not. Yes, it's all the way over here. You can see the tree changing from this distance. I find that a lot less noticeable. And so I kind of prefer it being like that. The next one that we have is overall visibility. This one basically controls like when things spawn in. So on shoreline, for example, if you're looking a long way away, then certain rocks won't spawn in and stuff like that. I usually leave it about 2000. For me, this is pretty good. Neither of these have a huge impact on performance as far as I can tell. So I normally leave them at relatively long distances. Now, after this, we get into anti-aliasing. Now, if you've got DLSS on, then anti-aliasing doesn't actually come on. The best setting that we can have is TAA high. So if we change over to this, firstly, you'll see that my frames will probably take quite a big hit here because I'm using 1440p. A 1440p monitor typically gets better results out of DLSS, but I don't really like TAA. You can see off in the distance, the electricity poles, some of them aren't even rendering at all. So like there's this one here, which when you're like further back like this in one times mode or even just in regular point fire, you can see that as I move, it appears, but it disappears straight away. And that's because TAA is just not a very good anti-aliasing method, but we don't really have anything else better in Tarkov. Interestingly, what happens is when you use DLSS, DLSS takes over on anti-aliasing and it does its own. What DLSS does is it basically renders the game in 1080 instead and then uses AI to upscale it to 1440. So it looks like 1440 with some minor aberrations, but you get the performance of 1080. That's at least the idea anyway. So you put this on, it also deals with anti-aliasing on its own too. So again, as you can see, there's this square of pylons. We can now actually see them all and there's much less flickering. It's like, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than TAA in my opinion. And also this goes the same for trees as well and grass and foliage and all sorts of stuff. Obviously you can't really see that now because it's all snowy, but I just prefer the way that DLSS looks. Now, some people take real issue with DLSS and there are some downsides, but I much prefer it, honestly. I get better frames for it because I'm running a bigger resolution and stylistically, I prefer the way that it actually looks. Now, you do get certain things. There are some artifacts with DLSS. You can't even see them now, actually. Like It used to be a lot worse. Now that we've got upgraded DLSS, it's a lot better. But if you've got the, a laser going over a relatively flat surface, you don't see much ghosting anymore. If you put it over a surface a bit more complicated, you can see some artifacts because the AI is trying to deal with like, how, where am I going to put the laser? Like, what exactly am I going to do with it? So you can see some ghosting there. And and very occasionally you can see some ghosting on the actual reticle itself as well but it's very difficult to see these days i don't really see it at all dlss used to suck because we had the old implementation of dlss and so you used to not be able to use it because in scopes everything was really low quality but this is not true anymore this hasn't been true even since i made the previous video on this topic so i use dlss all the time if you can deal with a little bit of ghosting and with the snow and rain being slightly floaty you can probably see the worst case for ghosting in terms of lasers just here actually but if you can deal with this and you can deal with the rain being slightly fuzzy as it comes down honestly i think it leads to a better overall experience you're kind of trading one thing for another you've got a little bit of fuzziness around rain and around lasers sometimes with this ghosting versus having better anti-aliasing so it's really up to you next in the list what do we have in store for us now we've got uh, fsr and fsr 2.2 if you don't have access to an nvidia graphics card unfortunately you have to go with either fsr 1 or fsr 2 fsr 2 is technically supposed to be better but i don't think in all situations it's as good as dlss there are some major downsides for example in this particular scene you can see just how unstable the pylons are like we were looking at this before and it all looked really nice when you zoom in and as you zoom out it gets a bit weird there's even more flickering around from fsr look at the side of the scope the trees for example and here the picture is like super unstable so i don't really like fsr as much as dlss so unfortunately if you don't have an nvidia graphics card you might just have to settle for some compromise either just leave it on taa high and not use any of this special ai stuff or try fsr in a few different situations if it really bothers you then just turn it off HBAO. So I have this off completely. When I test it, it doesn't seem to make much difference what you do with these things. The main thing that it does is it adds shadows around things. So objects will have shadows around them rather than not having them. So it's very difficult to actually see the difference between the two of HBAO or not HBAO. It looks slightly crisper or cleaner without HBAO, or at least that's what I think anyway. So you can see there's like, it almost looks like everything's sort of outlined a little bit with HBAO on. Now, I turn this off because of one very specific reason. I didn't know that this was HBAO for the longest time. If you go up to something, like up to an object, and you move your gun like right next to it, you get this weird shadow with HBAO. You can see right now it looks completely clear and crisp because I have it off. But if I turn it on and even put it on its max performance setting, you can see I get this like weird kind of shadow around the gun. But yeah, whenever you move up next to something, you get this like strange HBAO shadow. And that happens with any of the settings. So even if you go right all the way up to Colored Ultra, you still get this strange shadow around your weapon. It's like a little bit better. You can see it around the optic, around the L-can and stuff. And if I get rid of this, then that completely goes away. I don't really like the way that looks. 
but I just have it off completely. I think it looks crisper and cleaner without it. You can see the gun is just way more clean around the outside of itself. So I turn HBA off. The next one that we're going to look at is SSR. So I have this on medium. If we have it on off, I don't know whether we'll even be able to see it at the minute because of the way that the ground is all snowy. We probably have to go to woods or somewhere with some water or something. Okay, so I found a better place for SSR. There is actually some water here. So let's turn this off. So the puddle just looks like nothing, right? This is just a puddle of water. You can't even really tell that it's water. And there are some reflections. There are some reflections anywhere from just general lighting. If we turn on SSR and we turn it on even low, then you start to get all of this, which you couldn't see before at all. So we get to see in the window, we've got this like shop window thing. It only seems to work on certain scope modes. So it is slightly buggy. It's not perfect, but it looks a little bit better now. The pictures, again, it's quite unstable and a bit flickery. So I prefer having it on medium. Look it over to medium. And it doesn't seem to make any performance impact whatsoever. You see, that's a lot more stable in there and it, so it's now not distracting it just looks really really good and i prefer it because for a tiny performance here i don't think it really is it's not very meaningful the amount of performance that this takes i think the game looks way better for it and i think it's great so i just stick it on medium and leave it at that so back to anisotropic filtering so with anisotropic filtering off we've got our various tiles now if i lie down the tile quality over there gets really quite bad and what this does anisotropic filtering basically makes it so that no matter how you're looking at a floor texture or any textures it always looks the right way, or at least it looks a lot better than it would do before. Um, you can put it on per texture, but this doesn't really seem to do anything. It looks identical to me, and I've always just completely ignored the per texture model. Um, instead, I put it just on entirely, because then textures just look so much better. Here we can see on this wall, at the end of the wall, the textures look really quite bad, especially when we're in our regular point fire mode. If we turn anisotropic filtering on, then the tiles have got much better quality to them. We can see this nice line that goes straight through the tiling, and everything just looks better. This basically has no performance hit either. I just don't really see any point in having this off. So I just stick it on and then textures in the distance look really nice. Very quickly, we'll talk about NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Mode. This doesn't really have any downsides. Whether you'll notice it or not is questionable, but it doesn't seem to have any disadvantage really. So you may as well stick it on. This used to be bugged, but it's definitely working now, so it's okay. Sharpness, I have at point 0.1. I have this at the lowest value, bar 1, because I have my sharpness controlled by my post effects. I don't have it at 0, because there was a bug historically where you had it at 0 that everything went all kind of funny. So I have it at point 0.1, which is basically a meaningless number, just to avoid this. Whether this still matters or not, I'm not really sure, but I just avoid that by having it at point 0.1. And we have our limits. If you have reflex on, you can't change the game FPS limit. But what I do is I change this within NVIDIA control panel directly. So this doesn't really matter. You could change it for Tarkov itself as well, specifically. I have it set for every game so that I don't blow up my graphics card while I'm streaming. I really should probably invest in a two PC setup because I have my FPS set to something like 90 or whatever, because then that means that on streets or on Lighthouse or on the new shoreline, then I never have any issues with OBS. But needless to say, if you want to change the limit, probably just do that in NVIDIA control panel. And the last set is basically just streaming stuff these extra settings pretty much just all decrease your performance high quality color z blur chromatic aberrations noise grass shadows the only one that i've seen having any validity for is if you're creating content and recording Tarkov is quite notorious in terms of how badly it encodes and there's some people who recommend having grass shadows on because it might give the encoder a slightly easier time to create the picture and you might get a slightly higher quality recording or stream i don't know whether this is true or not whether it's spurious or not some people say that it works for them i just tend to have it off to be honest and in the snow again it doesn't really make any difference so the last one that we're going to do is we're going to look at the old post effects. So let's go and look at post effects itself. The best part about post effects these days is that you can visualize it so that you can change stuff in game and you can see what happens to your frame rate, which is really nice. But the best part about being able to actually see what happens is that you could go in an offline raid or you could go in an actual real raid and you can test it out and you can see exactly what these settings do. Now, the main thing that I would just be really careful about, I do have my frames capped to 90, as I said, so try to ignore what I've got in terms of my FPS. But bring up the FPS counter, go into the console and do FPS 1 and then go and have a look and see what these settings do. Probably the best bet that you've got is go to a problem map, go to somewhere safe and fiddle around with them in an actual live online raid. The other place that you could probably do it is in co-op offline, but you need somebody else to come with you to do that. You can't simulate co-op offline on your own, which BST, please let us do co-op offline by ourselves. But without that, you need somebody else to go into one of those raids. At least those are hosted on BSG servers though, so scavs and everything kind of act like they are online. Needless to say, in my experience, enabling and disabling post effects has a much bigger performance impact in offline mode than it does in a real raid. And this is because enabling post effects typically uses your GPU. Now in an offline raid, you're not really CPU limited because well, especially if you've got no scavs like I've got here, the CPU isn't doing anywhere near as much work. There's no other players on the map and all that kind of stuff. 
So this leaves the GPU free to do whatever because the CPU is not bottlenecked here. So when you enable and disable post effects, the GPU is having to do more or less work, which means that your FPS goes up or down. In a normal raid, usually the CPU is the one that's got the problem. So enabling and disabling post effects, your GPU is the one with extra capacity. So it normally doesn't matter whether you have post effect on or not. With that said, there are some settings that do make a difference to your FPS. Clarity, for start, makes a difference to your FPS. The higher you have it, seems the more FPS that it takes. The other one is Adaptive Sharpen. I don't know why Adaptive Sharpen specifically takes FPS, but I quite like having it on. Honestly, I could probably get away without it, but these are the settings that I have. I tried to keep it super simple. Some people really don't like clarity because of the FPS drop that it gives, but I think it's really, really good. Like if you look at the difference between no post effects versus lots of post effects on mine, I feel that the clarity of the game is just so much better, especially at distance. I feel like I could see people way further away. I could probably get away without this Adaptive Sharpen if I really wanted to. You know, you can make the game like as sharp as you want, really. And the sharper you make it, the harder it is to encode too for you creators out there. But this is kind of the middle ground setting that I like having it on. But go and have a play. Like it's going to depend on your map and on your system as to exactly what works. Some of the other stuff people have fiddled around with previously is using some of these. The classic one is to use Feather and turn that up to 100%. And this basically makes the game grayscale. So you can play nighttime raids without the whole thing being green and it's black and white instead, which some people prefer. But I tend to just pick like one size fits all settings because I don't like messing around with this every single time. As I said before, if we had settings for every single map, I'd probably be more incentivized, but I don't like fiddling around with this stuff in between individual raids. The only other setting that I've heard about that I want to talk about a little bit is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I think most people still have this on. I actually still have this off because it was incompatible with Windows 10 and with OBS for some reason. So I've got that turned off. And so I would only really advise turning it off if you have some specific clash like that. Otherwise, I believe for most people, it's better just leaving it on. So hopefully this helps you to understand a bit better about why I use what setting and it helps you to make some more informed decisions yourself about the best settings for your system. But otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoy the video. And as always, have fun in your raids.